More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. If you find yourself struggling to find your breakthrough and frustrated with your results, join my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. It's a private video coaching call every other week or I'll be teaching the skill of the week followed by coaching. JCIC members one-on-one live for observation. All calls are recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. Members will have access to the private JCIC Facebook group where they can ask questions, interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, the other JCIC members, and receive any support required in their breakthrough process. When you enroll, you'll receive the new members welcome kit, which includes my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, my Breakthrough Accelerator course, my digital coaching program, and so much more, all for $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Welcome. It is my unequivocal privilege and pleasure to be able to share with you some great content that will give you insight to your inner game, how you can go wherever you are from today to become that person that you deserve to be by the end of this year or sooner. So I'm going to cover a few topics here. First of all, I'm going to start off with a topic called sabotage. We're going to cover that today, and then we're going to move over to these four key points. Clarity, focus, concentration, and vision. Let's take a look at the first term, sabotage. Unfortunately, it's what many people do to keep from living the dreams, to keep from being the person that they're capable of being. Now, many people get overwhelmed. And if you're overwhelmed, what that means is that you're anxious. And if you're any kind of anxiety, your body's in a state of fight or flight. Now, if you're watching this video today, you're probably also saying to yourself that you also tend to get in your own way. You'll also tell yourself that you don't know why you do what you do. And then you'll ask a lot of these questions. How do I? It's not how do I, it's this. Why don't I? Now, the more you understand this cause and effect, then you can begin to let go of the mind-body connections that keep you overwhelmed, anxious, and in anxiety. If you're in a state of anxiety, then you will tend to not only be overwhelmed, but you'll tend to sabotage yourself. The term sabotage actually is a French term. It comes from a group of sharecroppers called the sabots. Now, once upon a time back in the 14th, 15th century, and you can do your history on this, the sabots were a share, group of sharecroppers who stomped out their grain to protest a tax, and many of them died from starvation, hence the term sabotage. Sabotage means that you tend to get in your own way, you tend to cause yourself problems, most importantly, you tend to disappoint yourself. Now, if you're in a place today watching this content and you are ready to let go of the cause that creates the effect of why you do what you do, then what you're going to do is separate your feelings from the events that shape them. I'll say that slowly. To let go means to separate feelings from the events that shape them. Now, the four points that I'm going to cover here today that will assist you to eliminate this. So you can erase this from your present. So you can live much more in the now. So you can be here, be now. It's, just, it's important, it's required, it's mandatory. It's a decision and a commitment. These are not have tos. This is an I am state. Now as you, as you begin to live in a state called the present, the now, you are in an I am. I am is a present state consciousness. Now let's take a look at these four points. Clarity, focus, concentration, and vision. Back in the day, I used to have a vision workshop. And in that workshop, I would spend about two hours covering what an ideal day would like, an ideal lifetime, an ideal month. 
an ideal summer, an ideal business, an ideal vacation. That means you're, it's important that you're able to have an outcome of the future while you're living in the present, while you're not holding on to the past. And the reason that most people hold on to the past is this word, R-E-G-R-E-T, regret. One of the greatest pains is the pain of regret. Now, if you're here today and you're present and you're reviewing this content and you know, K-N-O-W, not this term, not that kind of no. Unfortunately, what many people do is they let this word no, two little words, hinder them, and then they focus on this word, R -E, they focus on this word, R-E-J-E-C-T-I-O-N. These two become inseparable for many people, and that's what keeps them from having this, a vision. So when I used to conduct the vision workshop, at the end of the exercise, I would have my students in this intimate audience called Breakthroughs to Success, in a half an hour period, write out their ideal day. And I suggest you also start to envision that. You start to have a vision of a short future of what an ideal day would look like, what it would feel like, what it would be like. Now, any day is going to have two components of it, specifically in this word, time. You're going to have, number one, you're going to have produce time and relax time. And you want to be productive at both of these. You want to have your relaxation be productive. And if you have guilt and regret in your relaxed time, then your relaxed time is not productive because you're going to be overwhelmed when you should be relaxing. And if you're overwhelmed and you should be relaxing, then you're going to be in fight or flight. You're going to be in regret. The greatest rejection is to reject yourself, and that's what many people do. If you have rejection tendencies and rejection anxieties, then what you end up doing is you reject yourself because you keep yourself doing the same thing over and over, never really great gaining any momentum, no centrifugal force. You don't really go anywhere. So what would an ideal day look like for you? If you had an ideal day, then you wouldn't sabotage yourself. If you're sabotaging yourself, you're getting ready to get ready. You, it means instead of having an ideal day, you, have, you control the outcome of being disappointed. You stay in a, the pain of regret. You stay in your own abandonment rejection rather than moving into higher levels of consciousness in awareness, joy, love, bliss, and or enlightenment. Many people ask me, how do I get a vision? How do I have a vision? What book can I read on vision? Well, it's not like that. Vision is your own conceptualization of what idealistic would be for you. To be able to have a vision, you have to be able to dream. And you have to be able to not only dream, but you have to feel your dreams. You have to have sensations of them. They must have some meaning. What many people focus on is their debt. They focus on their problems. They don't put energy in to the future. So if you're going to have a vision, your vision is going to be time that you borrow from. You're going to borrow from the future because you're going to be able to see the ideal day, the ideal outcome. And as you start to create that vision, you want to have words like this, specific. See, this is where clarity comes in. Focus is also a very important factor in this process. And in concentration, you have a relaxed concentration. And if you have this, if you're intense, you want to be able to do this. If you, have, if you are intense, you want to, be, you want to have this. Relaxed intensity. But if you have this, anger, hate, and resentment, these are other anxieties that will keep you from moving forward. So here we are back at point number one, clarity, focus, concentration, and vision. Now I'm presuming that as you start to have better understanding of this, you're starting to eliminate this word, pro, crass, tin, eight, meaning to avoid. Unfortunately, a large percent of society are this, they're chronic, avoiders. 
Now, if you're a chronic avoider and you've moved in a state of recovery, now you're in a place called action. And your action must be specific. This is what this is, clarity, focus, and concentration. Now, a little later this afternoon, I'm going to have a dedicated block of time. And you can do this at any point in your weekend or whenever you start to re-engage in your free enterprise businesses. But in a dedicated block of time, you want to have clarity about about the outcome. That means you have this, a definite of purpose. This comes from the great book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, the chapter definite of purpose. If you've not read that book or read, received that content, I highly suggest that you take a good look at what that actually means, a definite of purpose. Once again, that is a no state. When you know, K-N-O-W, and you don't focus on no, that's what many people do, is they don't want to receive a no. They don't want to get a no because they have anxiety about the outcome. But when you know your destination, when you know your purpose, when you know you will not be denied, then you will focus your energy on an outcome that's favorable. Unfortunately, and this will be a breakthrough for you, most people's clarity is non-clarity, and they're unfocused, they have no concentration, and their vision is based on pain. What many people do to avoid failing and avoid pain is procrastinate. That's how they sabotage themselves. Then they use terms like, I can't get out of my own way. Now, I've already coached about 55, 60 hours this week leading up to the holiday weekend. On average, I'll coach 12 to 13 people a day with a 12-week waiting list. And about 9 out of 10 of the people that I coach are quality first-class Americans, Canadians, Australians. They have, they're idealistic in certain forums. They've had good careers and good jobs. But unfortunately, a large percent of society is overwhelmed, anxious, in a misaligned body, in a lot of liability debt, with no vision or purpose of the outcome they seek to create because at some point they stop dreaming. Now, if you're receiving this content today, I know that you are ITF, in the flow. I know that you are in a relaxed, concentrated state receiving this content because you're going to take this content and you're not going to not only receive it, but you're going to do this. Now, this is a key word in all of what I'm covering for you today. Two of the most important words that you're going to take home with you today is you want to be able to do this. In, to great, and you want to be able to put into application. You want to be able to integrate the content and then apply it. That means there's a repetition and experience over and over, which creates the compounded effect. The compounded effect is this. It is a quantum leap. Quantum leap is 2 plus 2 equals 16. Sum greater than whole of parts. 4 equals 16. Now that happens from the repetition, the experience of developing the emotional muscle of being present, being aware, being in love, joy, bliss, relaxed, with clarity, with focus, with concentration, most importantly, with an idealistic outcome in a dedicated block of time. So I'm going to break this down for you in a day, a week, a 30-day period, and a 90-day period. I realize this. This is a lot of content to absorb in one afternoon, but I know you're up for it. So we're going to take one day, one week, which is seven days, one month, which is 30 days, and then one quarter, which is one quarter of a year, which is 90 days. So this is, this is a recipe to goal achieve. Now many people focus on goal setting, but I'm going to give you insight on this goal achievement. It's not how to get a goal, it's how to achieve a goal. It's much more relaxed in your emotional body. It paints a different picture. You have more clarity in it instead of getting a goal. You don't have to get, you're an achiever. As you're an achiever, you're also a producer. As you begin to produce results, you're also going to master this word. This is a key word to create this, your vision. It's called com pen -sation. You want to be compensated. You're a skilled compensator, means that you're able to create results, you're able to adapt and adjust easily and effortlessly in a very relaxed body 
as you're able to produce the numbers that produce the results. Now, many people misconstrue life and business. They say it's a numbers game, not necessarily. There's a law of averages and the law of numbers. As you start to have a better understanding of the law of averages and the law of numbers, then you start to have a better opportunity, a better window, a better emotional state that you're able to create in the quantum field and the morphogenic energy required to be in a relaxed body. So one day, one day, it's not so much what you do day, it's not so much what you do, it's what you do day, D-A-I, L Y. It's what you do daily. But the more you understand that what you do daily is what's going to happen weekly, monthly, it means that you have this exceptional habits. But if your habits are based on avoiding, then time moves very slow. But if you have habits that are productive in that one day dedicated block of time of one or two hours a day, and you're focused in a relaxed concentration on creating results, you start to create the compounded effect. So if you have one hour, that means you have four 15-minute increments. Break time down of the 86,400 seconds, 1,440 minutes. Break time down so that you have a better understanding of cause and effect and why you do what you do. One day, one week, one month, 90 days, time, 86,400 seconds in a day, 1,440 minutes. Time isn't so much about what you do, but once again, it's what you do daily. It's what you do daily that creates the compounded effect. And the more you let go of your anxiety about results that haven't happened, then you can be much more effective. So also you have to be able to do this. Eliminate stories. Unfortunately, many people have a story that hinders them, keeps them sabotaging themselves from being effective in this one day, this one week, this one month, and this one quarter. Ask yourself, what story am I holding on to that keeps me chronically avoiding, keeps me sabotaging, and keeps me in my own way? That is the value of having this a vision. So to be able to effectively set a goal, you want to have a dedicated block of time, not only to accomplishment, but a completion date. So there's two ways that you'll goal achieve. You have a dedicated block of time to produce the results, and then you have a completion date of when it will be done. Then your time must be significant. Your habits, your skills, and most importantly, your emotional mindset. The way you perceive what you do daily factored with how clear your vision is and the outcome that you're seeking to create. Instead of saying, how do I, why don't you? When is the last time you had an emotional dream? A dream that you could clearly see, a dream that you could feel, a dream that you could salivate on the back of your tongue. Now, if this is a holiday weekend, many of you are gonna be enjoying that holiday weekend. At some point, that was a dream. You imagined that, you envisioned it. You couldn't wait for this weekend to arrive. Well, that's how you set goals, dreams, and have a vision or purpose in your future. You can't wait for that day to arrive. You salivate it, you feel it, you sense it, you know it. It inspires you. And people ask me what inspires me. I'm inspired. I don't, I have dreams, I have visions, I have purposes. I'm very clearly defined. I know what it is I'm going to do, be, and accomplish. I have certain situations that I'll be purchasing, goals that I'll accomplish, but it comes down to this. What I do and what you do daily. Then at the end of the week, monitor your results. If you're in a network marketing or direct sales business, you can monitor your results easily by the results you accrue. It could be your results, your team's results, a company's results, but you also have to be attentive. Most people are not only not attentive, they're completely unaware. A large percent of society lives in this place called denial. It's very common when I coach my clients, I start to ask them what their profit and loss statements are. And here's the typical statement that I receive when I ask this. Huh? It means that most people have no identity with their money. And if your dialogue with money is not conducive to creating it, then there's a high probability that you'll have challenges with clarity, focus, concentration, and a vision. The more you understand the cause that creates the effect of why you do what you do, then you can effectively do this, let go. 
Letting go is the ability to separate feelings from events that shaped your emotions. As you begin to let go of the events that shaped your feelings and you keep telling yourself, I don't know why I do this, as you have clarity, as you understand why you do what you do, as you have a vision bigger than your problems, as you get focused on an outcome you seek to create one day, one week, one month, and 90 days, now you start to magnetize to your reality the people and situations you seek to attract. I'll say that again. If you have a clearly defined vision, if you have purpose, if you have clearly defined short-term goals, you will begin to do this in a relaxed, aware state, magnetized to your reality, the people and situations that will fulfill your and their purpose. That's as you begin to attract a group of like-minded individuals coming together for common cause. That is called a mastermind. And a mastermind is when you begin to attract that one person, those two people, those three people that start to create the centrifugal force as you come together in a like mind. And you're not, you're not out looking for a business builder or a superstar. You're looking for one or two people of this, clarity, focus, concentration, and vision. This type of person represents this. The law of the few. There are a few people who possess these qualities, and there are many who can do this, develop these qualities. But most importantly, you do this, integrate, and you apply. The application means the AIC. The acronym about the, you know what is in the chair, where you have a dedicated block of time to produce and a dedicated space to produce from, and you start to develop that production muscle, that muscle of repetition and experience over and over that allows you to create the compounded effect. Quite simply, to add on to this, you require one other situation, and it actually is encompassed in these, I'll spell it out for you. I'll actually change colors because D-I-S-C-I-P L-I-N-E for effect D-I-S-C-I-P L-I-N-E first it will be emotional and then physical these are habits you start to develop emotional discipline that's when it allows you to never get overwhelmed if you have emotional discipline it means you stay productive if you have emotional discipline, you don't relapse back into a series of anxieties that typically take you out of flow and take you out of your game. The physical discipline, this is the action. This is the repetition and the experience of the action that you create daily. You don't take action. It's not something you take from anyone. Action is a non-linear situation where you're able to, in a relaxed state, be able to create the results and it's the physical action of it, the telephone, it's the skills, it's the creativity, it's the innovation. The emotional discipline is the ability to take a deep breath and let go and release the feelings based on a series of events that no longer serve you. And as you become skilled at this, you are now developing this discipline, reflexes. Emotional discipline allows you to develop a new set of reflexes, meaning you don't check out, you're, you stay present. When someone tells you this sounds good but, you're able to have a reflex that moves right into a space where you're able to ask a series of questions about the outcome you seek. Then you're able to move into a state called trust as you begin to effectively trust your feelings. The more skilled that you are at this aspect of being able to trust your feelings in an emotional discipline, the higher the probability that you will create on command results that are favorable. That means that your law of average begins to increase because you're no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shaped your anxiety. As you effectively learn to let go, you will tend to sabotage yourself a lot less you won't use statements like, got in my own way. You'll have a lot more clarity with your communication style. Unfortunately, what many people do in their communication, most of society's communication is non-committal. 
and their communication style is laced with words like G-U-E-S-S, K-I-N-D-A, S-O-R-T-A. Quality people don't even know they speak like this. They have no idea that this word right here shows up frequently in their sentence structure, meaning they're telegraphing their D-O-U-B-T. As I'm starting to wrap up today's content for you, I want you to have a better understanding of this, cause and effect, why you do what you do. The importance and the validity of being in a no state, knowing that means there's no separation between you and the outcome. You have clarity, purpose, vision, and concentration. You know the outcome. And from this focus that you're developing, you're focused on your listening. You're focused on hearing what's meant. You're focused on being present. You're focused on letting go. You're focused on not having any separation from you and the outcome you seek. And you're focused on having back-to-back -back exceptional productive days where you're also easily and effortlessly able to relax. With this portion of today's content, we're going to move into the question and answer forum of today's more Heart Than Talent Live. I want to thank those of you who reached out to me and had the, the wisdom and the insight to ask me a few questions. My assistant Carolyn's going to read some of the questions for you and then I'll answer those questions and we're going to go ahead and wrap up. So Teresa asks, you're talking about vision. Why do I draw a blank when I ask myself, what do I want? So let's take a look at that. Teresa, thank you for your question. The key words are draw a blank. In context, what does that mean? Well, drawing a blank means I don't know. I don't have a vision. It also means this. I've been so caught up in life making a living, typically being in dysfunctional relationships, that I haven't developed the habit of creating a vision. The educational system that teaches you the left to right world they teach you how to read left to right, doesn't have room in its system for having a vision. It has room in its system for memorization. So as you go through the educational system and you graduate from high school, you go to nursing school, you get a Bachelor of Science degree or Bachelor of Art degree, you go on and get a Master's of Art or Master's of Illustration, you get a, a PhD, well that's a lot of left-brained, analytical, egoic, mind that you have to stay in. It doesn't give you a lot of room to have a vision. You're in the neocortex of your brain. You're typically not going to be in your limbic brain. Now here's an affirmation. Now that I am grown up. I'm going to spend a little time on this because Teresa's asked a great question. Now that I'm grown up. Now you have the ability to create a vision. It's not how do I, it's why don't you, and now it's I am. A vision can come from a very relaxed meditative state. You can pull off on the side of the road. If you're driving in LA and you're up on Ocean Avenue, one of the most beautiful avenues in Los Angeles, you can get out of your car and you can go over up there and look over beautiful Pacific Coast Highway and over the ocean, or any multitude of places you want to do it, on a beach in the Jersey Shore. You want to be able to take a deep breath. A vision means an outcome in the future that is favorable. And the better and more clear you are at that, the better you will be at being able to create a vision on command. Here's one of my visions. I'm a dog lover. I've owned five Jack Ruffles in my life. I have a future dog that at some point I will own. It's a border collie. It'll be black and white. It'll be a male. I'll pick it up from a breeder. And I'm going to have my friend Joe DiBianca, the dog whisperer, train my dog on how to walk through my legs. I will be able to have hoops like this where that dog will jump through. It'll be a loyal companion. I can see its tongue hanging out on the side. See, it's not how do I create a vision, it's creating one. What's the next question, Carolyn? Annabella wants to know, how do I have confidence and belief? Well, let's take a look at that. Confidence and belief. Thank you, Annabella, for the question. Well, let's, go, let's break the question down even further. So, confidence... Then there's competence, and then there's belief. But Carolyn, there's one component missing here. The most important component here is this, S-E-L-F, self-S-E. You, you can have confidence. Confidence is how you feel about something. You can be confident in your job. You can be confident as a mother. 
You can be confident as a volunteer, but self-esteem typically gets exposed outside of the corporate veil or outside of a repetition and experience that you're competent in. So as you begin to move into a new space, it typically will test your anxieties and typically you'll get overwhelmed and it will expose your low self-esteem. The events that shape your feelings that you hold on to, the anxieties, anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, and overwhelmed feelings, those are the emotions based on a series of events that affect your self-esteem. Self meaning I, I have esteem. It means how I view myself. So belief means sense of certainty or sense of uncertainty. You're either solid in your belief or you're in disbelief, not belief. Belief is your sense of certainty. So how do you get there? It's not a how do I, it's an I am state. And to possess these, number one is permission, repetition and experience, meaning I am capable, I am enough, I am lovable. These are affirmations that you can affirm over and over. Many people will say to me, is all I have to do is just, ju no, it's not justing or jousting, it's not a just state. To possess esteem is to decide you have it. You don't have to produce for it, you don't have to purchase it or borrow it, it's a state that you give yourself permission to be in it, and you will have esteem if you can go one day of sobriety without criticizing yourself. If you can go one entire day without criticizing yourself and go to bed and rest that night knowing that you put one day in the banquet of your life into a healthy day, feeling lovable and good enough, you will have esteem. Next question, Carolyn. Dale says, I'm stuck being undisciplined. How do I change? These are, I'm going to write this down. Now for effect, I'll highlight this. How do I? Here's how it looks. How do I? How do I? How do I? This is what most people ask themselves. Let's do this. Why don't I? This is the question that will give you merit. This is the question that will give you benefit because this is the question that will lead to this, the events. It's the events that shape the feelings that create an identity. It's the identity that you live in, either you're good enough or you're not good enough, that keeps you in either in faith or fear. If you're in doubt, then you're going to straddle the fence. You'll have your foot on the fence and your foot on the boat. Now, as you start to let go of the control that keeps you overwhelmed, now you can start to move into a place called belief. Belief means sense of certainty. And when you become certain, it's not a how do I, it's an I am state. When you become certain, then you will not be denied. Read that question one more time, Kelly. Dale says, I'm stuck in being undisciplined. How do I change? So discipline means it has more than one meaning. So discipline means disciple of. Now, what we get discipline confused because we've been disciplined. So here's the reason that many people aren't disciplined. This is a key point. Un Discipline means not. That's what it means. He's not disciplined. So what does that mean is this. Is many people, they have a feeling that if they become disciplined, they have to give up their freedom. A woman said to me recently, she says, the reason I have challenges in my business is I went to a Catholic school and I don't want to be tied down. That's what, that's what the woman said. I don't want to be tied down. Well, that's contradictory. First of all, a business doesn't tie you down. Going to a gym doesn't tie you down. It can give you a benefit. It can give you a feature. But what most people look at is they see the word discipline, and the first thing that screams to them is this. Because they perceive discipline to be painful, so not to, ex not to receive pain, they avoid what they perceive to be painful. That's what leads to procrastination. The answer to your question is change your perception. Your perception of the word discipline means that you're, it's, a, it's a state that will create a result, not a state that will create pain. I believe we have one or two more questions. Is that right, is that right Carolyn? One more question. Laura says, how do I break through my fear and procrastination? 
I covered this call through, I covered that question throughout this call, but fear and pro crass temptation. How do I? As you'll see, this is a very common theme. When you don't break through it, you do this, you let go. And what you're letting go of is the story. So to let go of a story, you want to have this outcome that is more favorable than the perceived pain. Instead of being fearful, be liberated. Instead of being, instead of being, instead of living in not belief, live in belief. I mean, it's a, it's a different identity. It's a different level of energy. Those are the questions for today. My name is Jeffrey Combs. If you want to reach me, 209-932-0227. If you want to find out more about my coaching, you can contact me on Facebook with an instant messenger service. I offer 15 minutes of free coaching if you're reviewing this, provided you are dedicated and committed to hiring me at some point. Now, I also have the goldenmastermind.com, M is goldenmastermind.com, forward slash MHT special, MHT special. You can go to the site, goldenmastermind.com, forward slash MHT special. To take advantage of this, you will be offered, you will be, have the opportunity to receive five hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. That's one hour every two weeks. You will also be included in that value package, the Platinum Membership. You'll also receive three hours of digital online coaching, 24 modules, three to five minutes in length, that will give you 24-7 access to one-on-one -on -one coaching with me online, and one ticket to my two-and-a-half intimate Breakthroughs to Success workshop that is reserved for coaching clients only. I host that event four times a year. That event is a game changer, and it must be experienced, can't be explained. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder. You have a great day. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent Radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight on how to release emotional overwhelm and procrastination tendencies, then take advantage of my free Procrastination Cure Book giveaway. If you are committed to letting go of your procrastination tendencies, begin the process of changing your identity now so you can finally go from procrastination to producer. To receive your free copy now, go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash pro.